What the fuck? I apologize for the profanity, especially towards the audience that is watching currently with young children, but there is honestly no other way of expressing, let's say, admiration towards doing a sub-7 minute lap on the Nürburgring Nordschleife with just a regular GT3. Yes, of course, I could call the driver Lars Kern and be like, Hi there, old chap. That was quite a remarkable pace you did there through the green hell. I cannot wait to experience this exquisite automobile myself later in the season. But no, honestly, this was amazing. So you already seen the onboard. We're gonna go later on more uh, into, so to say, Nürburgring ring section of this video where we're gonna talk about the lap times, compare it to the previous lap times and um, go more into the future. We're also gonna go and read the press release of Porsche about the new 992 GT3, something that many of you have enjoyed when I did it in the past. But first of all, mandatory good morning comrades. Welcome back to the channel. Today is, as you can see, hopefully 16th, the Tuesday 16th of February. Two days ago, we had the commercial bullshit when it comes to love, etc., called Valentine's Day. Today, we have the actual day of being in love, falling in love with automotive again, because today is the day of the, the release of the GD3. Now, the, another reason why I'm showing you the actual time, as you can see, currently it's five hours, 51 minutes. This video was shot and edited and published after the official embargo date because I really wanted to wait to see what Porsche would say in the official live stream. And there were a couple of interesting uh, things that they mentioned, so it was worth waiting for. That's why we're publishing it a bit later than all the other automotive news, etc. So let's get started with the press release. And as always, this video is divided in sections, so you can skip through the, each section if you don't care about press release and you know all the facts and figures, but stick to them because they, they are actually quite interesting. So. Summary, high performance sports car with sports suspension and highly efficient dynamics. Porsche takes the new 911 GT3 off the leash. The seventh edition of its high performance sports car was also developed in close collaboration with Porsche Motorsport. Seventh generation, you're gonna ask yourself, 996, 997, 991, fourth. Where's the seven? Because 996 Mark 1, 996 Mark 2, 7 Mark 1, 997 Mark 2, 991 Mark 1, 991 Mark 2, and then now we arrived at the 992 GT3. That's why it's seventh generation. It transfers pure racing technology into production model with even more consistently than ever before. The double wishbone front axle layout and sophisticated aerodynamics with swan neck rear wing and striking diffuser originate from successful GT race car 911 RSR and the 375 kilowatts or 510 uh, PS, uh, or horsepower. A four liter six cylinder boxer engine is based on the drivetrain of the 911 GT3R. Tried and tested in endurance racing. Now, quickly uh, pay attention to this. Most important thing, something that many people were waiting uh, f with this new GT3 is the double wishbone front suspension. Now, some people are gonna say probably like, oh yeah, well, Citroen had it already in Traction Avant in 1934, almost century old technology. But on the other hand, we had Porsche with uh, 918, 919, GT2 RS, GT3 RS, setting those remarkable lap times and remarkable performances in the end. So I guess they know it better than us uh, to say that they, they didn't really need the double wishbone suspension, but now, they do a sub seven minute lap with having that. And then moving on to the aerodynamics. And this is also this one neck rear wing. They said that it has 50% more aerodynamics than the previous generation. And this has contributed to this ridiculous lap time on the Nürburgring Nordschleife and of course everything else. So let's continue on. Um, the acoustically impressive high revving engine is also used practically unchanged in the new 911 GT3 Cup. The result is a brilliant driving machine, efficient and emotional, precise and high performance, perfect for the circuit and superb for everyday use. Now here we really need to say massive thank you to Porsche, to uh, Andy Perninger, to uh, Dr. Frank Stefan Wallace, for the whole Porsche department for again, to keeping, for keeping the six cylinder, flat six cylinder, naturally aspirated engine alive as long as it's possible. I think they really deserve a credit here because there were always like speculations, is it gonna be hybrid, is it gonna go uh, turbo? And this is something we're gonna go later on in the video with some some of my speculations and uh, opinion, and uh, we'll get to that in a bit. Now, the distinctive strength of the 911 GT3 lies in the sum of its characteristics. With a top speed of 320 kilometers an hour, 318 with PDK, it is even faster than the previous 911 GT3 RS. 
Yes, it is faster than the previous GT3 RS, but at the same time, it's exactly the same values, something that is not mentioned in, the, in this uh, press release, exactly the same values as the previous 991.2, uh, yeah, 991.2 uh, GT3. This has to do with the fact that the RS models have a lot, well, a lot more aerodynamics, therefore they have more drag, therefore they have less top speed. So, although it is impressive, but it's not really worth mentioning at the same time, I would say. It accelerates from 0 to 100 in 3.4 seconds. Again, exactly the same values as you have with the 901.2 model, GT3. Uh, 3.2, I believe, for the GT3 RS of the 991.2. Uh, Porsche also offers the new model with a six-speed manual transmission for a particularly puristic driving experience. Yes, save the manuals, all the purists are gonna love it, and later on we're also gonna have the Touring, which is great. Again, thumbs up, no, thumbs up and high five. Corona, no high five, just thumbs up uh, for uh, offering this amazing uh, petrol head experience for the purists. Where was I? Uh, the sophisticated aerodynamics benefit from the experience gained from motor racing and generate significantly more downforce without no noticeably affecting the drag coefficient. In the performance position, the manually set wing and diffuser elements uh, significantly increase the aerodynamic pressure in the high cornering speeds. So, manually set wing, this means there is no active aerodynamics for the wing. Uh, although the front lip has uh, four different positions and the fuser is fixed as well. It is there that the 911 GT3 can play all its trump cards. During the final tuning works, it managed the Nürburgring Norge Life, which traditionally the benchmark for all sports cars at Porsche, more than 17 seconds faster than its predecessor. Yes, I already ex expressed my admiration for this. Development driver Lars Kern took the six minutes 59 seconds, it took just six, 6 minutes, 59 seconds, 927 minutes uh, for a full 20.8 kilometer lap. The shorter 20.6 kilometer track, which, has, uh, which had previously served as a benchmark, was completed by the 911 GT3 in 6 minutes, 55.2 minutes. Now, I already um, mentioned the, um, the difference between the, the two track layouts in the past multiple times, whenever the lap records were coming up, but still, uh, it's still unclear for many people. Uh, for example, Johnny Lieberman today on Instagram asked me the question like, hey, how the, what's the difference? I explained that. Uh, so here's just the, the insert or check out one of my previous videos. But uh, long story short, for the last 30 years until 2019, the 20.6 layout of the track was being used because you had so uh, similar to today's tourist and fart and entrance where you would have uh, entrance and exit on the different points. So you would have the start and finish on different points. And in 2019, Nürburgring started the official lap timing committee and they said, okay, we're gonna do the full lap now, but this means that the, the, the whole section is basically five seconds slower than the previous uh, lap record. So people would be asking questions, how is this a lap record if it's actually slower than the car that's driven in the past? So basically nowadays you have the old uh, lap time still and the, or, or so to say the old distance of 20.6 and the, the new uh, 20.832 uh, for comparison for references. Uh, sorry for going off topic, but nerd Burkring facts here. Uh, running on the optionally available Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2R tires. The new model consistently delivered its performance over several laps uh, in by the expert, uh, in the expert hands of Porsche brand ambassador Jörg Beckmeister. For Beckmeister, it is by far the best production car that, uh, that the experienced professional driver has ever driven in the green hell. Now, what we see here is that the car, we already knew it from the teasers, that the car will come with optional Cup 2R tires. I believe the big part of the lap time difference is uh, thanks to that tire. Another big thanks is to increase aerodynamics because in horsepower and weight difference, there is actually zero difference at all, pretty much. Um, so those are two things that contribute the most. And then, of course, we have also the double wishbone front, front suspension. But those three things are the, the main reason why it's, it has a 17-second improvement over the previous lap uh, of the previous generation GT3. Now, despite a wider body, larger wheels, and additional technical features, the weight of the new GT3 is on par with its predecessor, as mentioned previously. With the manual gearbox, it comes at uh, 1,418 kilograms. With PDK, 1,435 kilograms. The front bonnet made of carbon fiber reinforced plastic 
lightweight glass uh, windows, optimized brake discs, and forged light alloy wheels ensure weight discipline as does the cover for the rear seat compartment. The lightweight sport exhaust system reduces the weight by no less than 10 kilograms. With infinitely electrically adjustable exhaust flaps, it harmonizes a highly emotional sound experience with the Euro 6 emission standard. The combined consumption of the 911 GT3 is 11.3 liters per 100 kilo, uh, kilometers or 12.4 for PDK. Now the last value is probably like the last, um, the least interesting for any GT3 owner or customer. You're just going to floor it and you're going to have probably end up with one on five. But uh, the sport exhaust uh, with uh, infinitely electrically adjustable exhaust flaps. What I can understand from here is that you don't have any more the sport exhaust sound off or off, just like open and closed, but it will just open gradually as, uh, as, as much as you start flooring it, so to say. This has to do with the, the stricter emission laws, of course, that we have now and the sound regulations, etc. Uh, but if that's what it takes to get this car through emissions and get it homologated in, in the current Euro 6D um, homologation certification, yeah, of course, <laughs> I'll happily take that. All right. Moving on, its racing genes are expressed in practically all the details of the new 911 GT3. The cockpit is in line with the current model generation. A new feature is a track screen. At the touch of a button, it reduces the digital displays uh, to the left and right of the central ref counter, which reaches up to 10,000 revs, to information such as tire pressure indicator, oil pressure, oil temperature, fuel tank level, and water temperature, which are essential when driving the circuit. It also includes a visual shift assistant with colored bars to left and right of the rev counter and the shift light derived from motorsports. Very good, I like that. Less is more, especially when you're driving on track. You don't want to be distracted by some completely unnecessary uh, yeah, information that you wouldn't care. I would want to see at some point brake temperature uh, indicator maybe. Uh, that would be very good. I mean, at, at this point you have the brake wear indicator. You will have tire pressure, tire temperature might be interesting in some cases as well. Uh, so those are just like some additional values, it is, uh, just the, but, but this is already uh, very good, very, very good. Um, especially for Porsche GT models, customers are increasingly requesting customized equipment. For this reason, the Porsche black color wheels in the interior. Um, right, okay, we're talking spec and, uh, sorry, I cannot, uh, like, we're talking about performance. So let's skip the last part because it's all about uh, spec, spec, spec. Uh, you can find all the spec details on the, all the other YouTube channels probably. So, uh, let's move on. One more thing that I want to say is that I really enjoyed the press release, uh, re uh, press release written by the Stuttgart neighbors of AMG when they uh, made the announcement of the AMG Black Series uh, holding the lap record, where they talked about the day, the time, the temperature, which settings were used for the car. This was like really nice, very good to read. In reality, in this case, we're talking about a new model. So like other features are a lot more important. And on the other hand, also like a typical GT3 owner who would go and want to run his car on the Nordschleife, he would just go to Manta Racing and say like, hey, I want to have the best possible Nordschleife setup or even give me an MR package, which will definitely come at some point and then it will be fine. But some more detail, I think, for the nerds, especially since you have such an impressive sub seven lap time would be very much appreciated. So now let's talk about the lap times as uh, mentioned. Um, sub seven, god damn impressive, and it is the fourth Porsche to do a sub seven lap, which started in 2013, so like eight years ago, almost eight years ago in September, September of 2013, with a 918 Spider. Then we had in 2017, we had a six minutes uh, 47 with the GD2 RS. And then later on, GT3 RS in 2018 with 6 minutes uh, 56, yes, sorry. And then finally, now the fourth one, the, this remarkable 6 minutes 55 or the 6 minutes uh, 59 if you compare the full lap. This is remarkable. But let's take it a step further back. More than 20 years ago, the first 911 GT3 in the form of a 996 generation was the first production car to ever manage the sub eight minute lap. Vatero managed to do a seven minutes 56. Nowadays, you will be like, 
Okay, so, sub 8, uh, somewhere around 750, 740 is a hot hatch territory of nowadays. But now we're talking sub 7, 20 years later. It's remarkable. But uh, let's take a step back, so to say, to a more relatable times. So uh, in 2013, the previous generation of GT3 was introduced, or should I, should I say the 901 generation. And it did uh, Nordschleife in 7 minutes 25. Now, in two years later, 2015, the G3 RS 991 uh, Mark I was introduced and it was only doing 7 minutes 20. Later on, we had, uh, let me just grab the spec sheet, sorry for that. Uh, we had, of course, also the GT2 RS with uh, seven minutes 40, uh, 6 minutes 47. And uh, the 2017, uh, we had the Mark II, uh, GT3 with 7 minutes 12. And 2018, the GT3 RS, which was driven by Kevin Estre in 6 minutes 56. And now we have the yeah the, the basically the 2021 or the record was during on 15th of september in 2020 we have this ridiculous uh yeah six minutes 55 sub seven minute lap very impressive results one minute faster around the nürburgring nordschleife within 20 years and if we use these numbers we can see that they're pretty consistent 20 years for one minute roughly a decade 10 years for half a minute roughly 15 seconds to 20 seconds between the generations. So now we move on to the following generation or the following model is going to be, of course, the GT3 RS. And with these calculations in mind, we can guess that it is going to be somewhere around six minutes 30 or maybe even below. Now, as mentioned, the previous gains were mostly thanks to the tires, of course, going from Michelin Cup 2R to, uh, from, base, from the base Cup 2 to Cup 2R, I apologize and then of course aerodynamics. Now, I don't expect Michelin to develop another version of a Michelin tire, a Cup 2 RR or Super R. There might be like a model specific version of the Cup 2 R for the GT3 uh, RS 9 and 2 generation, but still 6 minutes 30, that is going to be crazy, <laughs> absolutely. We, and you are going to ask the question now, we're gonna go very much into future projection, predictions. What is going this to mean for the GT2 RS. Well, currently there are actually speculation that there is not going to be any GT2 RS because they're not going to manage it with emissions. Um, and they could manage it on one hand with by electrifying the model, but then it would take away all the drivability. Uh, so then it would just like kind of would not make sense. But then on the other hand, in today's live stream, uh, Mr. Valliser had the question of how does the GT3 fit within the electrification plan of 911. And I can hear many purists think like, what, electrification? And he said, it fits quite good. How does a car like the GT3 fit into the electrification plans of Porsche, Frank? <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> that's interesting. It fits, from my perspective, very good. Without giving any additional information. So we can only speculate that eventually well, the GT3 models and GT3 RS models will become electrified, will become hybrid, uh, and eventually like uh, electrified completely when it's necessary. So they will still remain, uh, they will still keep their names. Like think back when you had 911 Turbo, which would be a 911 with a turbo. Then the 991 Mark II generation would receive turbo all over their range. And then everyone was saying like, hey, this doesn't make sense. They're all turbo. Why do you have the turbo? And then the Taycan turbo came along and everyone was even more like, how does that, it does that doesn't make sense. And of course, yeah, uh, after a few months, all the purists calmed down and it started to kind of be okay. So nobody could care. So these are the two things that we need to, to like, it's just again, like some thoughts, some information, some rumors that I'm throwing at you, that it will be very interesting to see where it is going to head. Are we going to have a 992 uh, GT2 RS? Are we going to have 992 Mark II GT3 and GT3 RS because of the, the future emissions or even future sense of making such a model? Because by 2030, no internal combustion engines cars will be allowed to be sold in UK and some other countries. So it doesn't make sense by 2028 to release a GT2 or, or GT3 RS Mark II. I'm getting carried away a lot here, but this is just like, it will be, 
it, no matter what, what I'm referring to, the final thought, is that this model is going to be very specific, very significant, just like the 997 was the last RS model with the last Metzger engine, with the last manual gearbox, that this, the current GT3 and the following GT3 RS are going to be really special. What is going to come, come after that, there will be a change, absolutely, and it will be very interesting to see. But for now, before I get carried away even longer, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this video, this, uh, the, some insights, the, uh, some information. And as mentioned in the beginning of this video, I'm very much looking forward to drive this car. And a friend of mine has one on order, Paul, that we uh, drove together, uh, w w with whom we drove together at Scuderia Hanseat event back in 2019. A very cool video series in case you missed it where I drove the base 992 of his which was a mind-blowing car especially in the wet so I hope he will allow me to drive his GT3 as well so we can make some cool videos and otherwise I'll be fine on the passenger seat and otherwise maybe we'll, we'll be able to make an actual lap with Lars Kern finally happen on Monday Racing Track Day later in this year we will see. But for that, stay tuned, subscribe, like, share, you know it. Uh, again, looking forward to that. This, was an, this is an amazing car, and I hope you found this an amazing video. And I'm starting to talk nonsense, so it's time to go and upload the video. Bye-bye.